The project started with one question and many cameras. Is Philadelphia a healthy place to live? So our reputation for cheese steaks, tasty cakes, baseball mitt-sized soft pretzels might suggest that the simple answer is no, Philadelphia is not a healthy place to live. We've been called the fattest American city, the most depressed American city, Philadelphia for our trash problem, and Philadelphia for our outsized murder rate. More persistent is Philadelphia's reputation as a poor city, and here the facts clearly verify the rumor. In the most recent census estimates, Philadelphia ranks first in poverty among the 10 largest cities in the United States. One out of four Philadelphians lives below the poverty line. One out of three children in Philadelphia is poor. Philadelphia is also a healthy, eco-friendly place in many ways. And through the walls of our row homes, for instance, we share heat with one another in the wintertime. And our farmers markets and fresh food financing initiatives serve as national models for improving healthy food access. And our public art, I think, lends amazing quality of life in Philadelphia. So the question really for scholars of public health, for journalists like you, is how can those two things be true in such a small area? How can health vary so dramatically? Um, in such a small area. For starters, in a city as old as Philadelphia, socioeconomic differences are blatantly manifest in the housing stock. And you'll see that the condition of homes varies. Here you're looking at center city Philadelphia. Lovely people obviously trust their neighbors enough here to leave the stroller out in front of the house. Um, the area is well maintained. The recycling bin is out, but there's not trash on the ground. Um, here's another home in, on fancy Delancey Street, if you've ever been there. I mentioned how we in Philadelphia, we, it's a nice metaphor, we lean on one another. We have these houses that share walls, so we share our stability. But in many of Philadelphia's disadvantaged neighborhoods, the adjacent homes are gone, and all that's left is the imprint of the home that went before it. And I think it's uh, compelling to see what's left behind and to see the remains of a home, really. Philadelphia didn't have one major event that caused this kind of devastation. Uh, it's been chronic long-term poverty, accumulated strain. Um, some of the residents of the neighborhood attribute the decline of the neighborhood to race riots that happened in the early 60s, um, but it wasn't a Katrina that made Philadelphia look this way. One of the things that became very apparent in doing these interviews, the photo elicitation interviews, was the framing that participants used in discussing the health of their neighborhoods. So we gave a very open-ended assignment, which was to go out and document barriers to health in your neighborhood or facilitators of health in your neighborhood. And we didn't define health. We let participants define health. And I was, quite frankly, completely shocked that after the first um, five interviews, nobody had mentioned a doctor. Nobody had mentioned health care. Nobody had mentioned a diagnosis. Nobody said to me, my concern is that my kid has asthma. Nobody said, I'm concerned that HIV and AIDS are so common in my neighborhood. The most common themes that came up were the concern for, about safety and violence, the food environment and what the food environment meant. Was it just food or was it alcohol? What else was going on there? Housing quality and the decline of community. Many concerns about trash as an incivility. So um, I came away from this project really thinking about sanitation workers as the ultimate public health workers um, and how they're really unsung heroes of public health. I had to look at these data and say, okay, I see some of my own flaws here. You know, I've sort of sipped the Kool-Aid and believed that what we're funding in public health is what matters most. Um, and this project I think of as an opportunity to be critical of that agenda. So the moral of the story, I think, is that places, even places with seemingly intractable complex problems change. 
the conditions of health change, and it's my job as an epidemiologist and yours as reporters to keep watching. Because when we stop monitoring the status of population health and the conditions that shape it, the problems will be so far gone before we step in to make a difference. <laughs>